In this video I'm going to take a look at Python's arithmetic operators and also take a look at the types that are produced when we perform arithmetic operations within Python. At the end of the previous video in this playlist I left you with this computer program and asked you to produce a trace table for it. What you can see here is the skeleton of the trace table and if you consider these variables here you can see we've got a b c d and the trace table has to reflect these variables that are used in the computer program and you can see they appear here now the first thing we need to consider are the do not care conditions that you can see I am filling in here and I'll highlight them with this red highlighting box and you can see that I've put an X in all of the columns under the variables A, B, C and D and I put a squiggle under the statement. Now this is telling me the condition of the variables before the program executes and I refer to these as the don't care condition. And as I've already said, it doesn't mean I don't give a monkeys what they are. What it means is the program has not affected any of the variables yet. So I always get into the habit of putting this line in first. Then we have to consider the computer program. So we go to the first program statement and I'm going to copy that program statement here in the first column under the heading of statement. And this is A is assigned 9. Now I now need to consider what variables have been affected by this and clearly it's going to be this column here where you can see the A has changed from the don't care condition to the value of 9. So variable A is now storing the integer 9. Now we need to consider what's going to happen to all of these variables B, C and D. Well the answer is A is assigned 9 has done nothing to these variables so we simply copied what's in the row above down and in this case we've copied three X's because we have the B, the C and the D still in the don't care condition meaning that they have not been affected by anything in the program code. We now move on to the next program statement which is here and between the A and the 2 you can see there are two forward slashes. Now they are telling me that this arithmetic operator is something that's often referred to as an integer division. Now we need to ask ourselves what's an integer division as opposed to a normal division. Well let's consider it for this program statement. We can see I copy the statement down here first and then of course we're affecting B. The first thing I need to consider however is this integer division and what's happening? Well we can see here we've got 9 and we're going to be integer dividing that by 2. Now if this was a normal division 2 into 9 goes 4.5 times because 9 divided by 2 is 4.5 but what this kind of division does it asks how many times does 2 go into a and in this case a has got the value of 9 so we're asking how many times does 2 go into 9 we ignore any remainder because this would be 9 divided by 2 goes 4 times with a remainder of 1 but here what we find happening is that the variable b as you can see is given 4 telling us that 2 has gone into 9 4 times and in this case there's 1 remaining. What about a, c and d what's going to happen to them? Well their values have not been changed the value of a has been used but it's not been altered by the assignment b is assigned a into division 2 so we copy down what's above so you can see we copy down the 9 and the 2 x's we now go to this program statement and that program statement is copied to here and what this is now asking is what's b multiplied by 3 well we need to realize that it'll be 12 and we put 12 here in the c column because b has the value of 4 and we're multiplying that by 3 to give us 12 in this column. What about A, B and D? Well, if we consider what they're going to be, they're going to be whatever they were on the last row, 
because nothing else has been affected apart from the C variable. So the 9, the 4 and the X are copied down as you can see. We now go on to this program statement, which we copy to here in the trace table. And this is saying D is assigned C plus 2. Now, if you scan across and look at the C, you can see it's 12. And what we're doing, we're adding 2 to it. So here, we're going to place the value of 14, which is the value of C plus 2, which is clearly 14. What about A, B, C? Well, they're going to be whatever the values are above. So we copy those down from above, as you can see. Now we can go back to the computer program to this program statement. A is assigned D minus 4. And we copy that down to here. And we can see that D has the value of 14. And from this, we're subtracting 4. So what we place here is the result of that, which is 10. Because 14 minus 4 is clearly 10. Now we need to consider what we will put here. And the answer is, well, we copy down what's above, as you can see. So we have 4, 12 and 14. Now we go on to the next program statement, which is this one. We copy that into this column. And what we can see here is that the arithmetic operator is this division. And this division will divide A by B. Now let's consider what A is. We can see it's 10. And the B, well, it's 4. Now, 10 divided by 4 is 2.5. So C, under these circumstances, will be given the value of 2.5. So into here, I will copy 2.5. And we need to appreciate that this division with the forward slash, not the one as it was before, which was two forward slashes, this one will do a division as we would normally expect it to be done in real life. 10 divided by 4 is 2.5. Now, in a programming language, one of the things we also now need to ask ourselves, we've got the result of 2.5, but what type is it? Well, it is the type of a float. Now, we don't have to put this in any way into the trace table, but as a programmer, we have to realise what we're dealing with here. This C has now got stored within it 2.5, which means it is a float. So C, the variable C, is storing a float. In other words, C was 12 in the previous row, and that value was an integer, and now we can see that the value in C is 2.5. So in the previous row when it was 12, it was an instance of the integer class, i.e. type integer. And now it's 2.5. It's an instance of the float class, which we can say is of type float. And now we need to ask, what about the other variables A, B and D? Has anything happened to them? Well, we simply copy what's above down to here because the assignment statement C is assigned A divided by B, has no effect on A, B and D. Only C has been changed from 12 to 2.5, as you can see in the trace table. Now we go on to this program statement, and we copy that down to here. And now we need to ask, what does this mean? Two of the asterisks. When there was one, we knew it was a multiplication. Well, this means raised to the power. So here we're going to have D raised to the power of 2. Now, when you raise anything to the power of 2, you're said to be squaring it. So this will find the square of D. Let's have a look at the value of D, and we can see it's 14, which means it's 14 squared, which is 14 times 14, and the result will be stored in B. So if we consider what D raised to the power of 2 is, it's 196. So what we will place in here will be 196, as you can see. Now, what about variables A, C, and D? Well, they're not going to be affected by this, so we simply copy those values down to here. Then we go back to the computer program, we pick this up, and we place that here, and now we need to ask, what is this operator here? Well, it is the modulus operator. And it's another example of an arithmetic operator in Python. 
And what happens under these circumstances, you take the A, as it is in this case, and you divide it by 6 and you look for what the remainder is. Now, of course, we can see A has got the value of 10. And we're going to be placing here the result of 10 modulus 6. Well, 6 goes into 10 once with a remainder of 4. So what's going to be in D is the value of 4. Now, we're now going to ask the question, well, what happens to A, B and C? And the answer is nothing. So we will be copying these down to this position here. And if you now consider the trace table, it's complete for this computer program. And what we're looking at is these have all executed in turn in a sequence and they have been taken from here. And if you look starting near the top, you can see we've got integer division, we've got multiplication, we've got addition, we've got subtraction or difference. Here we've got another kind of division. Here we're raising to the power and this is a modulus operator which will tell you what the remainder is when the variable a is divided by 6. This division and this division are different. This one will give you how many times 2 goes into a and this one will give you a result that has the fractional bit associated with it. These are all examples of operators arithmetic operators in Python. Now, of course, the next thing we're going to be doing is looking at this and realizing that the values of A, B, C, and D, when all of the program statements have executed, will take up the values you can see here, 10, 196, 2.5, and 4. So when we come here and we print A, B, C, and D in turn, we're going to see the output look as you can see here, 10, 196, 2.5 and 4. So when we have print A, we can see from the trace table we're taking 10 and you can see that in the output. When we go on to print B, you can see we're taking the 196 from the trace table and it appears at the output. We go on to print C and you can see the 2.5 at the output relates to what the value of C is in the trace table. And finally we will print D and you can see that will give us 4 which we can see taken from the trace table. Now what we need to do is to realize that all of these here, these three, are all examples of integers, which mean they're of type integer, which means that A, B, and D are instances of the integer class. If we now look at this one here, that's an example of a float. Its type is a float, because it's got this fractional bit, as you can see. And this is an instance of the float class. But it's normal to simply say, this is a float, and the other numbers that I highlighted a moment ago were integers. I'd now like you to have a go at producing a trace table for this computer program, which is pretty similar to the one I've just done in this video. And you can see that I'm using all of the other metic operators that I've used in the previous example. And this time when you produce the trace table, as you're producing it, I want you to give some thought to what the types of the variables are as the program executes. If we look at the skeleton for this, as you can see here, you can see that obviously I need the first row to be the statement and the names of the variables. This row here is reserved for the don't care conditions. And here you can see that I've got eight rows, because if I look at the program, there are eight program statements in a sequence. If I consider the variables, you can see I've got A, B, C, and D. Now, they have been taken from the fact that the variables in the program are A, B, C, and D. Inspect the program yourself, and you'll see there are no other variables used within the program. I then want you to consider the types of the variables as I've already mentioned. And to give you a hint, the variables will either, for this program, be an integer or a float. Give careful consideration to what C will be for this program statement here. What type will it be? Will it be an integer or will it be a float? Give it some thought. When you have finished the trace table, to test that your answer is correct, 
enter the program exactly as shown here and run it and look at the outputs making sure you look at what you are getting for this output here see if it's what you expect now in the next video in this playlist the one that follows this in the playlist on python exercises i'll be going through and producing the trace table but also discussing the types of the variables as we go through the execution of the program please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to ensure you get an update every time i upload a video maybe you would like to consider supporting the development of these free videos via patreon in addition why not follow me on twitter and also check out the supporting website